God is good every morning. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4. Oh. Love language. I love his language. He's got a wonderful love language. Man. Glory. Where did I say to go? Hebrews 4. Oh, boy. Hebrews 4. Did y'all have a blessed night, Friday night? Amen. Amen. God's on the move, man. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith to those who heard it. It wasn't mixed with faith. In other words, they weren't really willing to accept it. In other words, some people don't even realize they get in a, a place where they challenge God. And it's an attitude or it's an intent or a motive that challenges God. And, and let me tell you, you don't even realize you're doing it Amen. unless you're willing to really search it. Amen? Amen? So in this, he says, sometimes people are listening, but they're not hearing Because they have so many things that they want to do of their own life. And so they, they, want to, they want to take what's from God if it prospers in the area that's promoting what they want. Amen. How many of y'all know truth hurts? Amen. Truth can hurt. Amen? I had a discussion with a gentleman yesterday who was trying to tell me that... Um, he, can, you can, he can't lose his salvation. I said, oh, so if you just choose to serve evil, and then who are you serve? And he says, well, I serve the devil, but God loves me no matter what. I said, yes. He said, so then how can God allow me to go to hell? I said, you go to hell. You put yourself to hell. He doesn't. But he doesn't get it. Does everybody understand that? And it was grieving to my spirit because of the area where here's a person proclaiming to be a believer for 20 and 30 years but has no depth of understanding. And I'm sharing with you, depth of understanding is important. I see so many people drift in so many areas because they chase so many other things but God. But call themselves Christians. Listen, if you ain't chasing God, then you ain't a Christian. Is everybody okay? All right, verse 3. For we who have believed do enter that rest. And that rest is associated with trusting God. You enter a rest where, man, you trust him no matter what's going on. You're rested. For we who have believed, who have followed, do enter that rest, as he said. So I swore in my wrath that they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Why won't they enter rest? Because of disobedience. Amen? Rebellion. Stubbornness worldliness for he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way and God rested on the seventh day from all his works and again in this place they shall not, not enter my rest since therefore it remains that some must enter it and those whom it was first preached did not enter because of what disobedience no, there was, disobedience is associated with rejecting God it's rejecting what he says. You know, when I had this discussion with the person yesterday, he said, do you believe in God's word? He said, yeah. Do you read it? Yeah. Well, you, you, ain't, you ain't got no understanding then. There's no understanding. You know, some people read the word of God to justify their own belief. Amen. Amen. They'll skip over everything else. Man, I know a lot of Places that skip over the baptism of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> they, they skip over casting out devils. They skip over um, 
they can't, you know, you break covenant with God. Has everybody got it? They skip over all that. They talk about God's love, God's love, God's love, God's mercy, God's mercy, and God's grace. How about God's judgment? Because he is a judging God. Amen. All right. In verse 6, since therefore remains that some must enter it, and those whom it was first preached did not enter because of what? Disobedience. Again, he designates a certain day, saying in David, today after such a long time as it has been said, today if you will what? Hear his voice. And do not what? Harden your heart. Mm. Do not harden your heart. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not have afterward have spoken of another day. Therefore, there remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. In other words, your works have nothing to do with your salvation. In fact, your works should, have, should be the fruits of your relationship. Amen? So you're not working for salvation you labor unto the Lord because of your relationship with him. In verse 11. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. Verse 12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the hearts. It's a what? Discerner. Everyone say discerner. In other words, it's an exposer. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and verse 13. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must what? Give account. In this place of rest, it means trust. We, we, we trust because we trust his word, don't we? His word is the word of promise, and his voice is the voice of fellowship. I want to say that again. His word is the word of promise, and his voice is the voice of fellowship, even though it's the same. But there's a word that is written we call logos, but a word that is spoken is called rhema. And his voice is also considered the word. But his word is always associated with established covenant promises. But his voice is established with relationship. Relationship. Amen? It allows us to discern. Now, this is very important. To discern unacceptable influences. Amen. It allows me and you to discern unacceptable influences. Hebrews 5, but well, we're so close to Hebrews 4. Hallelujah. Hebrews 5 and verse 12, let's speak it together. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. You have come to need milk and not solid food. And, and that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to keep you in a place where you can only, you know, a baby has to be fed milk. As you mature, you know how to feed yourself. Amen. And he's saying, look, at these people can't feed themselves. They've been Christians 20 and 30 years, and they still can't feed themselves. And they're still only getting milk. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Again, the individual that I was talking to yesterday was a babe. Because he did not understand. And there are babes that are behind pulpits. And they're still teaching milk after 20 and 30 years. I love steak. Man, there's just something about the juicy taste of steak. You know, good protein too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, verse 14. But solid food belongs to those who are what? 
full of age. That is those who by reason of use have their what? Senses. Exercise to discern both what is what? Good and evil. Senses. In other words, you're sensitive. These senses, you know what's good and evil. Believe it or not, your senses are associated with your flesh. That means you have dominion over yourself. You have dominion over your flesh, so you're actually using your flesh to sense things of the world. If you're really filled with the Spirit of God, then you're using your flesh to serve you. You don't serve your flesh. Amen. Many still can only partake of milk, unable to digest the meat of the word, unwilling to follow with all of their heart. They're living between two worlds, unwilling to practice or exercise their senses of what is truth and what is a lie. Hmm. Why? Because you take the word of God and you compare it to it. What's truth and what's a lie? In John chapter 4, 1 John 4, I'm sorry. Unacceptable influences. Hallelujah. In verse 1, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, let's speak it. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Hello. Do not believe every voice. Amen. <laughs> do not believe everything you hear or read. Amen. Amen. The, that's where you and I must find out what the source is. Amen. What's behind it? What's the source? That's what allows the discerning of spirit. The gift of discerning spirits is what brings you to the source of everything. So everybody understand. Amen. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And by this, by this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of what? Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore for the, they speak as of the world. And the world does what? Hears them. Hears them. Oh, hallelujah. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error or the spirit of lying. <laughs> In other words, these spirits promote influence, don't they? One will promote truth and one will promote Deception. Verse 7. Beloved, come on, read it with me. Let us love one another for the love of God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God for God is love. God is what? Love. love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this love, not that, the, not that we loved God, but God, that he loved us and sent his son to be propitiation for our sins. In other words, now you have the choice to love him. That's where love language comes. Hallelujah. <clears throat> uh, verse 10. In this love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his only Son, to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. We ought to what? Love one another. Love one another. Why? Because God is love, isn't it? See, we're to test the spirits. And we're, how do you test spirits? By the fruit. Is it a Christ-like spirit or world-like spirit? Amen? What, you know, uh, what, what does it promote, self or Jesus? Does it promote kingdom business or worldly business? 
What's the source? What's behind everything? In Genesis chapter 4. <clears throat> Unacceptable influence. So whose choice is that? Ours. You can either accept it or reject it. Anybody ever done something? Don't raise your hands. <laughs> Were you wishing you wouldn't accept it? Yes. <laughs> Genesis 4 and verse 1. Now Adam knew his wife. He knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from, this, from the Lord. Then she bore again this time Abel, now Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock and their fat, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why are your countenance fallen? If you do well... Will you not be what? Accepted. And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for what? For you, but you should what? Rule over it. But you should what? Rule over it. Now that is very powerful. Hmm. That you should rule. See, when you accept an un unacceptable influence that's displeasing to God, you will promote a fruit that's unacceptable to God. Does everybody got it? When you, when you receive something that's unacceptable to God, your that, that fruit, because it's like when, what you're getting, because you know them by the fruit, what you're, what you're taking in, you will promote an unacceptable fruit before God. Does everybody understand that? But when you accept things that are of God, you will promote something, you will promote a fruit that's acceptable to him. So there's that area. What you're intaking, you're going to be expressing. So when there's a fruit that's unacceptable to God, it's because you took something in that was already unacceptable to God of what you took in. It was an influence that was not pleasing to him. And then it comes out that way. Everybody got this. Unacceptable influence will promote, promote or produce unacceptable fruit in the eyes of God. I'm going to say that again. Everybody say it with me. Unacceptable influence will produce unacceptable fruit in the eyes of God. Jeremiah 17. In verse 7. Jeremiah 17, 7. And let's speak it together. Blessed is the, the man who what? Trusts in the Lord. So when you trust in the Lord, you enter a rest? Yes. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be a, like a tree planted by the waters, which spread out its roots by the river. In other words, you're a drinker. You're a what? Drinker. Yes. I love the drink. Yeah. You shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spread out its roots by the river, and will not fear when he comes. But its leaf will be green, and will not be what? Anxious in the year of what? Drought. Will not be anxious. How many of y'all know that anxious is a fruit of unacceptable influence? Nor will cease from yielding fruit. It says that the heart is deceitful above all things and des desperately wicked. Who can know it? The, I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his what? The fruit of his doings. Wow. So if we're accepting uh, uh, unacceptable influence, 
and promoting unacceptable fruit to God, then our reward, there actually won't be one. It'll be more of a judgment instead of a reward. Amen? God tests according to the ways in fruits. What <clears throat> you allow, what you're allowing to influence, that produces your fruit. Anxiousness is an un unacceptable influence. It is a fruit of an unacceptable influence. Do you understand that? Does everybody get this? Pornography is a fruit of an unacceptable influence. Perversion is a fruit of unacceptable influence. Homosexuality is a fruit of unacceptable influence. Lying is a fruit of unacceptable influence. Does everybody understand this? These are things that are unacceptable to God. That means that that person has been influenced already and producing an unacceptable fruit. Luke t chapter 12. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have a what? An anxious mind. Be anxious for nothing in all things through prayer and supplication, right? For all these things the nations of the world seek after. And your Father knows that you need these things. But seek the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. Do not fear little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Amen. Sell what you have and give alms. Provide yourselves money bags which do not grow old. A treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches nor moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your, your what? Your heart will be. Wow. In other words, be anxious for nothing, anxiousness is fear. Anxiety is fear. Over-exaggeration is fear. Why? Because it's from an unacceptable influence that pushes. It pushes. It does not lead. And it pushes us out of the godly position. It pushes us out of God's timing. Amen? It pushes and in that, we come to a place where well, we no longer are in right standing with the Creator. And remember, the enemy comes to disconnect us, doesn't he? And we heard about that Friday night over and over and over. That's all they kept talking about, wasn't it? His testimony. And how the enemy loves to come and disconnect. And he uses an unacceptable influence to bring disconnect. 1 Kings chapter 3. So when you become anxious, it means that you are associating with a spirit of fear and you need to cut it and stop it right then and there and get rid of it so that you don't do something stupid and promote an unacceptable fruit. Many people make decisions on anxiousness or push or stress. And when they do that, usually the outcome is not favorable. 1 Kings chapter 3. Hallelujah. 1 Kings 3 verse 6. <clears throat> Let's speak it. And Solomon said, You have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in what? In truth. Did David make mistakes? You betcha. But you know what he did? He got back into the truth. He fought for the truth. He was a man after God's heart. Even though, he, did he, he, he accepted unacceptable influences multiple times. But he paid the price for everyone. And he got back in position. And, and, and here Solomon is talking to the Lord. And he said, because... Uh, he, he walked before you in truth and righteousness and uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Now, O oh Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David. But I am a little child, 
Do you understand that God wants us to look in that arena to him in that way? We are his little children. When I'm in relationship with the Lord, unless I'm in battle, I'm his little kid, child. Does everybody get it? I'm his little child. He's my dad. I just go sit on his lap and we talk. But when I'm in warfare, I'm a soldier. I'm an expression. I'm no longer a child. The anointing is there and I'm interceding. That's totally different. Because demons don't respect children. But they respect the anointing of God as a soldier of the Most High. But I am a little child and I do not know how to go out and come in. Verse 8, read it. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give to your servant a what? Understanding heart to judge your people. You think he needs that discernment? Yeah. That I may what? Discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, Because you have asked this thing and have not asked long life for yourself, nor asked riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of, of your enemies, you have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. My goodness, this is so powerful. If we would just stop asking for all the other things and get understanding and discernment to be able to judge what pleases God and what displeases God, he'll give you everything. Amen. Why? Because now you're seeing what he sees. Verse 12. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart so that there has not been anyone like you before nor shall be like you arise after you. And I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be anyone like you among the kings all your days. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David walk, then I will lengthen your days. Of course, if you don't, he's in trouble. Yeah. Wise and understanding how to discern. <laughs> now, was he talking to the Lord? It's called relationship. Came by relationship and a desire to please God, to do those things that are acceptable him so he could discern what is good and what is evil. Those are the things you and I need to ask. He knows what we need. Amen? He knows. He's just looking for his children to come to him. Lord, I, I can't do what you're asking me to do unless you give me wisdom and understanding. Why? So that I can discern those things that please you and displease you. I want to know. I don't want to be misled by any unacceptable influence. Amen? I only want, what does the word tell us? It talks about acceptable will of God. Amen? I don't want to do anything. I don't want to accept anything that is displeasing to you because if I do, then it's going to promote a fruit that's unacceptable. It'll promote a character in me that's unacceptable. It'll promote a place in me that's unacceptable that I won't gain your trust. He does far above all we could ever ask or think. <laughs> Malachi chapter 3. Is everybody okay? Malachi chapter 3. Verse 16. Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him. For those who what? Fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. 
on the day that I make them my jewels. How many of y'all want to be a jewel of God? Yeah. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again, what? Discern between the what? Righteous and the wicked. Between one who serves God and one who serves, does not serve God or serves himself. Does everybody get it? So that you will be able to discern. Look, you'll be able to discern. The, again, even the gift of discerning spirits is associated with what's influencing a person. What's influence? You can, you'll tell right away what's influencing a person. What, what are they accepting? Why? Because what they're releasing, whether it's accepting, accepted to God or not. And if you're in right standing with God, you're carrying the same mindset as the mind of Christ. And you will say, yeah, that's pleasing to him and that's displeasing to him. That's acceptable to him. That's acceptable. That's unclean. That's clean. That's holy. That's unholy. That's God's time. That's not God's time. Somebody get it. But see, there's so much influence that we've got to begin to unfold, unveil what's influencing me and you. Why? So that we promote the fruits of the Spirit. In fact, that reminds me of something. I want to go to Galatians for a second. Galatians chapter 5. In verse 22, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Is everybody there? And Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Jesus said, if you love me, you obey me. Love also associated with respect. Amen? It's respect. Joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and it ends with what? Self-control. In other words, control. Of, these are the fruits of the Spirit. In other words, if you're allowing the Holy Spirit to possess you, <coughs> you're going to be releasing fruits that are acceptable to God. That means you have control. You have self-control. You know how to muzzle your mouth and tie your tongue in a bowl. You know how to shut what you're hearing off to what needs to be not good, not acceptable. You know how to shut your eyes to the things that are not acceptable. Has everybody got it? Not acceptable. Accept the unacceptable influences you're able to shut down if you're really being led by the Spirit of God. And if truly you're allowing Him to reign, if you're allowing Him to take possession of you. If you're not, then you will produce the fruits of the flesh. Amen? So here we're going to discern righteousness and wickedness. Those that serve God and those that don't serve God. Because many people say, yeah, I'm a child of most God, man. I serve the Lord. Let's go drink. Let's go party. Or they start cussing. Or they start saying things that are just not right. Or their associations are not godly. I'll tell you, you'll tell somebody by who they associate with. You'll know exactly where they are. You don't know whether they serve God or not. All of their friends are heathen. That's plumb dumb. Then they can't be too right with God, can they? Why? Because associations bring what? Impartations. Bad company corrupts what? Good habits. So they will avoid those type of people. They won't hang with them. Leviticus 10. Unacceptable influences. Hallelujah. They get us in trouble, you know, <laughs> when we accept them. Leviticus chapter 10. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Amen. 
Now, again, it doesn't make a person bad. Amen? Makes him deceived or simply stupid. I said simply stupid. <laughs> they can go to any level they want. <laughs> we'll start off with a simple area. But I've seen them really stupid. I've seen people really stupid in the spirit. <laughs> Who told you that, man? Leviticus 10, verse 8. <laughs> then the Lord spoke to Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine or intoxication, intoxicating drink. Why? It's going to give you a what? Unacceptable influence. That's why they call drugs dope. We become dopey. Do not drink wine or intoxicating drink. Now, you can drink even the things that you watch or listening to. It could be toxic. Amen? You know your sons with you. When you go into the tabernacle of meeting, lest you what? Die. In other words, you can't forget relationship. There, there, there won't be relationship. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations that you may distinguish or what? Discern. Between holy and unholy. Between unclean and clean. And that you may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken to them by the hand of Moses. Why? Because your children are going to pick up what you do. Not that they all follow right away or anything, but hopefully the end result will work out. <laughs> we're to distinguish, we're to discern what is holy and unholy. Influence of alcohol and drugs and all kinds of other goofy things which is unacceptable to the Lord will promote an unacceptable fruit. Amen? It will be disastrous for me and you. In Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16 and verse 1. It's good to hear the pages turning on a Sunday morning. Got the day right. <laughs> you don't know how hard I am fighting here. <laughs> Whew. Trying to keep my words right. <laughs> Matthew 16 and verse 1. Let's grow for it. Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came and testing him, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. <laughs> he answered and said to them, You idiots. No. <laughs> I think you might have been thinking that, though, you know what? <laughs> dum dum. <laughs> he answered and said to him, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, see, idiots. <laughs> you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the what? times see one of the things that unacceptable influence will bring you blindness to the time sequences of god do you know how many believers are out there don't even know what time and season they're in they're still dilly dallying in the, into the world and you know tipping tiptoeing through the tulips thinking everything's cool they have no idea what's going on in the world no idea knowing that jesus is about to ready to return any time they have no idea what's happening. And the only thing that's following them is demons, and they're getting fed off of them. Constantly getting fed, because demons get fed by emotion. Whew. They can't discern signs of the time because of unacceptable influence. <laughs> Verse 12. Everyone say blessed. blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. cursed. 
Blessed is the man who what? Endures. Burns through. Says no to temptation. To unacceptable influence. No. For he will receive the crown of life. Which the Lord has promised to those who what? Love him. Why? Because you love him, you obey him. Let no one say when I am, and he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires or own influences, unacceptable influences, and then what? Enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, the presence of evil, it's welcomed in. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Because the wages of sin is death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of what? First fruits of what? His creation. Why? Because, now look at we're his fir first that we're his fruit, aren't we? Amen. By being born again to the Spirit, because we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, decided to follow Him, denied ourselves, pick up the cross, and followed Him. Now we're producing fruit, because what we've accepted was accepted to God. Amen. Now we produce fruits that are acceptable to Him now. So then, my beloved brethren. Let every man be swift to hear. Every man be swift to hear. Everybody do this. Good. And slow to what? Oh, everybody do this. <laughs> yes. Did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Verse 19. So then every so then my beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak. Slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to what? Save your souls. For anyone who is a hearer of the word and not a doer is an idiot. <laughs> He's like a man observing his fa natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is or was. But he who looks into the perfect liberty, the law of liberty, continues. Everyone say continues. In it. And is not a what? Forgetful hearer but he's putting the word of God to practice. He's not a forgetful hero, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. Praise God. I'm going to close at 2 Corinthians 6. <clears throat> Is everybody there? Amen. Okay, what does he say in verse 12? You're not restricted by us, right? But you're restricted by your own affections. In other words, unacceptable influences. Now in return for the same I speak as to children, you also be open. Do not be what? Unevenly yoked with unbelievers, unacceptable influences. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion is light with darkness? All These are exposing unacceptable influences. And what accord is Christ with Belial? And what part is a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has a temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I'll be their dad. I'll be their God and they'll be my people. If you'll do this, stop allowing unacceptable influences. Come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord, and don't touch what is unclean, and I'll receive you. I'll be a father to you, 
And you'll be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit and perfecting holiness in a reverence and fear and respect to God Almighty, the one who created me and you, by not allowing unacceptable influences, but allowing acceptable influences so the fruits of acceptance to God are constant. Amen? Praise God, we got through this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my daddy. Oh, how wonderful you are. Lord, we want to say thank you for your word this morning. Teach us your love language, Lord. Teach us your love language. So that we may love you all the days of our life, no matter what we go through, Lord. We will maintain connection because we know you love us and we choose to love you in everything. So, Lord, let this word from your throne be protected by the blood of Christ that's been imparted in us so that it may constantly grow and bear fruit so that we may grow in wisdom and understanding and grow in discernment that we may discern those things that are pleasing to you and displeasing to you all the days of our life. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.